Welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 2 of ASP.NET Grid View tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss about different data source controls that are available in ASP.NET. There are several of them as you can see on the slide. For example, let's say I have some data in an XML file and I want to retrieve data from that XML file and then bind that to a grid view control. So which data source control can I use? I can make use of XML data source control. Now, if my data is stored in a Microsoft Access database, then I can make use of Access data source. Now, let's say if my data is available in a SQL server database, then which data source control do I use? I can make use of SQL data source control. On the other hand, if my data is available in an Oracle database, then which control can I use? Again, SQL data source. Now, remember, SQL data source control can be used to work with databases like SQL Server, any OLEDB or ODBC databases, or even Oracle databases. Don't get confused by the name. SQL data source doesn't mean you can only use it to work with SQL Server. You can also use it to work with other databases as well. We will actually be talking about each of these data source controls in detail in our upcoming videos. Now, the point to keep in mind here is that prior to the introduction of these data source controls, developers had to write a few lines of code to retrieve and bind data with these data, you know, with the data bound controls like data grid, grid view, data list, drop down list, etc. But with the introduction of these data source controls, we don't have to write even a single line of code to do that. Let's actually understand that with an example. But before that, keep in mind, to bind data to any data bound control, basically we can achieve that in two ways. We can do that by using these data source controls or without using these data source controls. First, let's look at how to do that without using data source controls. For example, I have this table called TBL products. Now, let's say I want to retrieve this data from the SQL Server database and then bind this to a data bound control like a grid view control. Let's see how to do that without using SQL, I mean, data source controls, basically. So I have this grid view control dragged and dropped on this web form already. And then if I'm not using data source control, then obviously I will have to write all the code myself by hand. Now I have this ADO.NET code already typed. So let me copy that and paste that on this web form. So obviously, what are we doing here? We have a connection string defined in web.config file. So uh, db connection string is the name of the connection string. And then look at what we are doing here. Um, we are reading the connection string from web.config file using the configuration manager class. And then we are preparing the SQL connection object using that connection string, then preparing our SQL command object. And this command is executed using that connection object. Open the connection, retrieve data, set that data as the data set for the grid view control, and invoke data bind. So all these things we have to do in code. So if I am not using you know, data source controls, then we have to write code basically to do all these steps. Okay, and then obviously when I run this, as you might expect, you know it will execute that command select star from TBL products, retrieve data, and display that in the grid view control. So here we are not using data source controls, so we have to write code ourselves to do all those steps. Okay, so we have the data there. Now let us see, you know, when we use data source controls, you know how easy it is to actually configure the, that data source control, and then we will be able to retrieve data without writing even a single line of code. So let's do that. So I have another web form here, web form 2.aspx. On this web form 2, I have this uh, grid view control. Now on this grid view control, I want to display the same data. So I'm going to go to my toolbox, and then I'm going to use SQL data source control because my data at the moment is present in SQL Server, and I'm going to use SQL data source control. So let me drag and drop that onto the web form and click on this button and click on configure data source. So obviously now I'll have to tell the SQL data source control, uh, you know, where my database is present. Okay. Now in web.config file, we have already seen that we have a connection string. So if I drop that list down, I can see the connection string that's present in web.config file. Select that. So now this data source control knows which SQL server to connect and which database to connect to in that SQL server installation. So when I click next, now within that database, you know, in this case, we are connecting to sample database. So whatever tables we have, all the tables will be listed, you know, on the screen but I want the data from TBL products. So I'm going to select that table and I basically want all the columns. So I'm going to leave that star selected. 
and then click next we can even test the query if we want and then click finish so my data source control is now configured and if you look at this data source control now look at that it has got this connection string property which basically has the information about the SQL server and the database to connect to and the select command property specifies what command needs to be executed on that database okay now all that is left is you know for this SQL data I mean for this grid view control specify the data source control that we have to use and then we can do that you know graphically by selecting it from this drop down list choose your data source so I can select our SQL data source one here or you can also associate that you know in the source directly so every data bound control has got a property called data source ID so data source ID is equal to the ID of the data source control which knows how to retrieve you know which knows uh, to connect to which SQL server and what data to retrieve okay so in our case it's going to be SQL data source one so I'm gonna grab that and specify it here that's it we are done now let's run this and as you might expect you know the data is going to be the same on this web form 2 we retrieve data without using you know uh, any code by using the SQL data source control. Now, if you look at our webform2.aspx in the page load, you don't have any code whatsoever. But whereas on webform1.aspx, where we have not used, you know, a SQL data source control, we have to write, you know, this code basically to connect and to execute that command retrieve data. So if you are using data source control, we have we don't have to write even a single line of code. All you have to do is drag and drop a data source control on the web form, configure the data source control to connect to a uh, data source like a database and retrieve data. Finally, associate that data source control to a data bound control using data source ID property. Okay, and and please keep in mind all data bound controls has this data source ID property. You know, there are several data bound controls like drop down list, checkbox list, etc. For example, let's say I want to display the same data, you know, whatever that's present in SQL data source one control. I want to display that data in a drop down list. Can I do that? Absolutely. Let me drag and drop this drop down list, for example, on this uh, web form. So that's the drop down list. And look at this. This drop down list also has, you know, choose data source. So when I click that, I can select a data source, SQL data source one. Now you have an additional thing to do here because a drop down list, you know, there are two things that we need to specify. The value that we want to display to the end user, I mean the text basically, and this text item will also have a value behind it, which will basically be stored in the database. Okay, so what is a drop down list? It's a collection of list item objects. We have discussed about that uh, in our ASP.NET tutorial. So if you're new to drop down list, I strongly recommend to watch, uh, you know, videos on ASP.NET drop down list. But then a drop down list object is a collection of list item objects and a list item object has a text and a value property. So what is the value that you want to display for text property? Uh, let's say I want to display name and maybe for value I want to display, uh, you know, the ID property itself. Okay, so I click OK. That's it. We are done. Now, when I run this, obviously the same data will be shown both in the grid view control and in the drop down list. So, as you can see there. Okay, so keep in mind all data bound controls has this data source ID property, meaning you can associate these data source controls with any data bound control. We will be talking about the rest of the, you know, data source controls in our upcoming videos. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.